the final whistle then so tonight we are off to the event at the king power stadium a q a with men's first team manager steve cooper and women's first team manager amandi miguel yeah looking forward to this one to see what both managers have to say ahead of the new season so yeah let's get to the king power stadium then for the q a in terms of results, they can pick a couple up and then lose a few on, on the trot. How, how will you breed a culture of positive consistency? I think the first thing you have to do is, is focus on objectives and on the process more than the result. Obviously everyone wants uh, the results and go up in the tables, but you have to focus on things that you can change, change that the players can change and that's really all the aspects of the game, trying to be tactically better, physically stronger, and uh, have a very uh, strong fighting mentality uh, to, to never give up. What are you hoping to, to get out of that? Uh, having any pre-season trip is, is really important with the team. It's even better when it's in such a nice place, but obviously having uh, the full team and staff staying 14, 15 days together is really ideal to um, develop again on the field, but also out of the field. The fact that the players um, bound together and get on with each other because um, you can have the best players in the world, like you would know, like maybe PSG try to do with the men for like 10 years, nothing's happening, they're not winning anything. So it's not only about having the best players, but it's about having players that want to do things together and that understand um, the, the way we want to do them. time um, so just to let you know obviously after the sad news tragic news of, of last week we were on, on camp in, in Germany and um, I, I didn't know Craig that well personally I met him once or twice just in normal coaching circles if you like but um, really really affected a lot of staff at, at, the, um, at the camp last week um, and, uh, and it was a difficult day or, day or so which continues obviously into into today as well. Um, so you could see from the reaction um, the, the impact that he had, uh, not just on, on the coaching field and the success and successful teams that he'd worked with, but also as a human being. Um, some of the stories that started to come out that night um, were, were quite moving, really. You could see that he was a, a brilliant bloke. So, um, so we, in the next team meeting, obviously put Craig's picture up in, in the screen that we use, and um, a couple of staff just talked through the, the impact, better place than me, um, that he'd had here, and, um, and was remembered fondly and, and, and nicely, and we all got together on the training pitch, and, and like yourselves, tonight took, took a moment to, to, to reflect. And I learned that um, 
um, there was something around him always having two balls in the, his arms. So we, 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 um, one of the staff members put two balls on the centre circle. So um, and um, uh, Matt Reef won't mind me, mind me saying he was really hit hard by it, by the news. Um, he talked about how. Uh, Craig would have liked how everybody had come together and, and, and had a bit of a laugh at times as well in such a such a sad sad well continue to be a sad sad moment. So um, yeah, we like to pay, think we paid our respects. There's people in the room. Well, all of us would, would have known Craig uh, better than what I did, but I can tell you, I um, had an amazing reputation as a coach. I was actually with him at the FA when he did that one game with with Sam Allardyce with the England team. Had an amazing reputation in coaching circles um, uh, and as a, as, a, as a man as well and I could see that with the impact that it had on, um, on a lot of staff members who have been here in a long time so um, tragic news and you know, um, you know the, 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 the warmest of thoughts go to, to his family. Then the opportunity came to speak to the club and it was quite a long process if I'm being honest and um, I think as soon as there was wind event or maybe it might have been moving on then I was Quite fortunate that I was sort of speaking fairly quickly, and as I went through them conversations and I started understanding the club and met with the owner and um, did my due diligence, then you know, I'm a big believer in gut feelings and and, and making decisions from from the heart. And um, I think if you go with your, your gut feeling, then even if you get some things wrong, I think you still sleep better at night. And, my gut was just getting so excited and um, as then the conversations were continuing, I, I became pretty desperate really to, 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 to want to be here. So I was conscious of the obvious elephant in the room if, if it's here, um, but if it was um, something that bothered me that much, then I, you know, I wouldn't be here now. So um, here I am, um, having come in the club and done, obviously the players have been in now, this is the fifth week, I think I did a week or so before that. Um, loads of goodwill around the club, loads of really good people working at the training ground, very well sort of structured club in terms of how it's set up. Um, and what I would say, and you, you guys I'm sure are proud of this, is sort of when you, as a manager, when you lose a job or get a job, you do receive a lot of messages from, from the game. And, and when, I, when I got appointed, I was inundated with messages and. Uh, and letters, etc. And um, the, the, you know, this football club has a very, it's a very likable club in the game. There's no, no doubt about that. You know, there's a lot of sort of, you might say, okay, Coops, you know, congratulations on, on, on the appointment. Leicester seems like a brilliant club. You know, that's just coming from from outsiders. So um, everything's just been 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 really positive. And for me, while that's been the case, and I know we've not kicked the ball properly yet. Um, every time I see something good or somebody might say something positive, um, it just makes me so determined to do well, you know, and um, I carry that determination and I'm obsessed really with, with trying to do the best I can and showing the people um, the best of me. I've done brilliant to bounce back into the Premier League. It's not an easy thing to, to win the championship, um, but hopefully we agree also on the gap between the Championship and the Premier League is a, is a huge one, massive, and I felt that personally. So I'm very much trying to get the balance right between building on a lot of the really good stuff from last year and, and continuing, adapting a little bit to the challenge of the Premier League, and also it's, it's my responsibility to do it in the way that I, I think is right as well as the head coach. So I very much want to see the play with the ball, I very much want the team to play forward and uh, play with a good tactical idea um, and uh, in a, in a re I don't want to say repeated way but a consistent way that the players very much get used to how we want to go about it, um, train it every day but also I also a big believer in I never want to take decision making away from the players so there's no way that I am going to restrict Abdul. From, from from being, I don't think that's possible. No. <laughs> I, can't, I can't restrict his dress sense, I know that. But, <laughs> but I, I don't want a, a young, exciting talent, and I've been lucky enough to work with, with young, exciting talents before, going out on the pitch, 
worried about can I do this and can, can I do that. As long as they play for the team, they play for the teammates, the supporters, I want them to make decisions that let them be the players that they are. Now the secret is that they're doing it within the structure of the way that we play. Um, and when you do that, you know you have a philosophy and, a, and, a, and an identity. I think a lot was said in, uh, in the previous couple of seasons about um, um, uh, how I had to play, um, but that was context again. What this job has given me is a real opportunity to show me what I really believe in uh, at the Premier League. I don't think I've been given that opportunity yet, but now I've got to go and show it. Um, um, my aim is when the supporters uh, walk out of the stadium, obviously we want the results, of course, but I also want them to go and see a team that thinks, yeah, I've been excited today. Whether it's the way they work, it's the way that, the way that we play, um, the, the, um, the way that we attack. Um, I want supporters to look at the team and, and you know, really get behind it because they can see the connection. And uh, that's, uh, that's a big aim of mine. If we can, to do our bit and create the atmosphere up there, you know, because we know you guys will, will, will follow. Um, it's an obligation of ours, you know. But we were talking about, do we change some of the music, the lighting, whatever goes on before the game. You know, the, the supporters are, are already up and running before, before the kickoff, you know, and um, hopefully that, that can be the case this year because when that happens then, you know, you, you know we can be unstoppable at all. Yeah, so, um, so I've got to say that the guy, the spirit amongst the guys is really good, the work ethic. Um, and, it, it, you know, what, what, what impresses me, okay, you can look at players' talent, but you can also look at players' work ethic, you can look at how they treat the teammates, how they prepare. Um, and, you know, I could give you lots of examples, but you know what, we're going to be a team this year, and there's not going to be any one person more important than the other. So let's keep it that way. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, there's a camera's man. Changes um, that we can maybe see in this new season without giving too much away, of course. Yeah, like I said, like I said uh, you know, it was, a, it was a clear way of playing last year, and um, the, the box in midfield with, with Ricky coming from the inverted fullback quite right, um, with Winksy at the bottom, and then um, Wilfred and, and, and uh, Kiernan at the top of the box, I and mean, our hands have played an important part as well. So it was clear that that box had a, a really important role with, with Steffi and uh, Abdul staying, staying really wide. So um, some of that will continue. The box will look slightly different with the personnel um, and the type of positions that go, go in there. Um, and like I said, we, we want to get the playing style or a balance between giving ourselves the opportunity to control games, if that's what's needed, but also a fast attack in our game as well. That if there's a pass to one of the, the wide players or one of the, uh, to the advances at the top of the pitch, let's get there and go, go, go and attack. So um, I'm trying to answer this question without giving too much away, to be fair. Because <laughs> we start playing and we go, we never said that. But, uh, um, what I do know is we've got a real clear plan that we're working to, and, um, and it's slowly getting better if we can add the right players in the right positions, and that's going to improve even more. Yeah. Just to share. Uh, as a place, have you had a, a chance to get out and about much yet? You said that your family have stayed in, in North Wales, have they? Yeah, so I'm, a, I'm, a, um, I'm Welsh. You know, I grew up in South Wales and but I've lived in, in Wrexham. I used to say the outskirts of Chester, but now Wrexham are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I used to say, where do you come from? I go, the outskirts of Chester. But, uh, since Ryan Reynolds bought the club, I see I yeah, live right in the middle of Wrexham. But, uh, <laughs> no, um, no, that's, that's a bit of a nice story actually, because where, where my kids grew, uh, lived and have always lived. So, um, I, um, I'm, like I said, they're there back home and I'm here on my own. And, um, you know, I'm sort of obsessed with, with doing well for, for, for the club and doing well for my family. Um, but I, I am very much a believer in understanding who you represent and to do that. I mean, one of the first things, I, I don't know if Jim's there from the family. An awful lot to the supporters, and, and clearly you can see that already, even in short amount of time. Yeah, yeah and I've got to prove myself as well. You know, let's, let's not hide away from the fact. You know, it's uh, 
like I said, when a manager walks into a football club, he's not always everybody's cup of tea. And I get that, I understand that. But for me, it's about not um, facing away from that. It's about proving to everybody, really, how much I want to be here, how much I believe in myself, and, and how, how successful we can be while I'm here. Because I don't really believe in hierarchy. I believe in it, everybody being together. Um, and uh, I, I want to show that, you know? So um, things like this and open training sessions and, um, and, I, and I promise you anytime this needs to happen, whatever has gone on, it might be a good, bad run of form, I'll be here, you know? And if today we're standing up here just taking loads of different <coughs> questions, you know, brilliant, you know? Because it's a really opportunity to show how much I want to be here. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Steve. <laughs> Hi all, thank you for watching The Final Whistle. If you enjoy all our content, please remember to smash a like, share and subscribe to the channel.